Welcome to MacroCode. If you're new to this channel, consider subscribing. So today we are going to learn how to deploy sp.net web API uh, on IS a web server. So I'm going to deploy uh, this REST API. So we actually created this REST API on our previous video. So if you don't know how to do that, please watch on our previous video and I'll paste down below the link so that you are, you are able to catch up with this video. So on this API, we have the student's uh, controller, which actually performs all the operation. That is the get, uh, put, uh, post, and delete. Then we have our model for student. These are the data that you are supplying. Then we have our program.cs. So we are using SQL server. So under app settings, we have our connection to the database. So if we, I just launch this app, you're able to see our REST API. There you are. You can see we have this uh, API. We are calling it REST sample. We have the get endpoint. Then we have the post endpoint. We have the students uh, get by ID. Then the put and the delete. So if we try to run this, try it, then you execute, you should be able to get uh, <coughs> some records. You can see we have some records. So we are going to see how to deploy this API. So what we need to do, we'll uh, right click on our project here, then we are going to publish. So if you right click, then choose publish. There you are. So the target, you are going to target it to a folder. You can also target it to uh, <coughs> Azure, uh, Docker Container Registry, FTP, Web uh, Server, or uh, Import File. So I'm going to uh, publish our files to a, a folder. So I'll just choose folder, then next. Then I'm going to choose the location. So I'll just choose my desktop then I'll create a new folder in my desktop called published, then okay. Let me try again, we need to choose this one. Yeah, so you can see published, then finish. So it will actually, you can see, <coughs> we have our target location delete existing file, we can actually edit this so that we can, in case there are files that exist, we can delete them. So if you click on edit, you can see we can target, we can run this as portable. Uh, we, we can target uh, portable, Windows 64-bit, uh, 32-bit, uh, uh, ARM machine, 64. So you can actually deploy this depending on that. So for me, I'm going to choose, uh, let me choose Windows uh, or you can leave it as portable. Then uh, file publish options, delete existing files prior to publish, check that. Then the database, you can see we have already a connection that we had on our app settings.json. Then entity framework, you can see you already have the connection to our database. So we'll save this. So this should now change to true. Target a framework is .NET 7, then target runtime is a portable. So after you have done that, at the top right corner, you'll see a publish icon. So click that, then our project should publish. So it's publishing. So we are deploying this to our IAS. <clears throat> so if you are new to this channel, consider subscribing. And if you're already watching our videos and you have not subscribed, you are not doing good to us. Please just subscribe. So <clears throat> let's open our desktop. So you can see on our folder, we have the files already published. You can see we have these already published. <clears throat> so what we need to do, we need to open our eyes. So click on our windows, then just uh, search IS. So I'm deploying this to my local machine. So I'll open IS. 
So this is Internet Information Service Manager. Then under IIS, I'm going to create application pool. You can see. So I'll create add application pool on my right hand side. Then I'm going to say .NET REST API. Then I'll just leave it the rest as it is. Then I click OK. Then under sites, you can see I'm going to create a new site. So I'll add a site. Then uh, I can select the pool. You can see I can select the pool that I want to use. So I'll select that pool, then OK. Then the site name, <coughs> I'm going to call it sample rest api then what i need to do with my files i'll copy these files then go to uh, local disk c then uh, uh inet pub go to inet pub then window ww root folder then under ww root folder i'm going to create another folder then i'll call it rest api then under the rest api now i'll paste my files so i'll paste my files there after i've published so there you are we have our files so back to our is so under the content directory physical path I'll choose the, I'll try to select the files now under local disk C, INET pub, then WW root, then REST API, the folder that you have just created. So I'll select that. Then I leave it as it is. Then the port, I can have, uh, I can indicate the port that I want my application to be running. Then I leave this as all un unassigned. Then I can have it as HTTP. But in case you want to bind it to an SSL certificate, then you will choose HTTPS. Then it will give you other options. Then you will select the SSL certificate that you want to uh, uh, use. This is after installing, remember. So for now, I'm going to use HTTP. So in case you want us to demonstrate that, comment down below so that we'll be able to show you guys. So. I'll try to test the settings to see if everything is okay. I can see everything is working fine. So I'll click OK. So you can see we have now our REST API as one of our sites under the sites uh, folder. On this other side, you'll see it is running on port 2013 and everything is fine. So in case you need to do any changes after you have done the settings, you can actually use the basic settings then you can change the location. But in case you want to change the ports and the uh, SSL, then you will do bindings. Then you can see, you can also edit and you can still go through the same, same process. So <clears throat> everything should be now fine. So what we need to do is to browse these applications. So let's browse to see if it, it will run. So you can see it is localhost 2030. So application, you can see. It is saying this local host page can't be found. The API is telling us this local page can't be found. So really, what you need to test, you, as you can see on our API, we have the weather forecast controller and we have the students controller. So we can try to access the weather forecast controller by typing the controller name on our page so you can do slash then weather forecast we see if it will return some uh, data so you can see it has actually returned the data so our api is actually working but now when we try to access swagger you can see we are not uh, able to go through that so in a speed on net call, uh, currently Swagger is only allowed on development mode. So you can see this can only be used in development mode, which is actually the correct thing to do. But in case you want to access this uh, even after deployment, then you can remove these outside there. You can actually add it also, maybe just add it 
uh, outside this uh, code under the program.cs file. So we can also try to redeploy, then we can see if we can access Swagger. So I'll deploy that. So it's done. So I'll also go back to desktop, then copy my files, then take them to local DC, INET pub, then a WW root, then I'll paste it again. So when replacing, I can stop my API under IS, then try to uh, copy the code. So these are the published files. So trying to copy them back to INET pub WW root, then so I'll replace them. So go back to IS, I can restart my app, then go to, so if I try to refresh this now, I should be able to see Swagger. You can see Swagger is now up. So you can actually enable Swagger on the de deployment by uh, adding this code down here, or which is actually not, is not a good practice. So you should only be accessing that under development. So if you want to access them when you deploy your app, then you can add the code outside this if statement. So that is it guys. So we have deployed our API and uh, Swagger. And, uh, and we have deployed our API in IS and you can see everything works well. So, so that is it guys. So we can now access our app under IS. So if you have any question, comment down below and see you in our next video. Bye.